Okay, let's get started. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to the uh, next keynote uh, session. So I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Deborah Pignatari Drucker. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, biological interactions and uh, she's a data specialist at Embrapa Digital Agriculture, which is one of the Brazilian agricultural research corporation research center. Uh, she's one of the co-chair of the Research Data Alliance, uh, Interest Group Agriculture Data, Community of Practice, and an expert at the ip based Data and Knowledge Task Force. Uh, she has developed data projects at the National Institute for Amazonian Research, University of Campinas and Embrapa, and is involved with GoFair Office Coordination in Brazil. So we are really looking forward to your talk. Uh, Dr. Drucker, so the screen is yours, the Zoom is yours. Let's go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Jitendra. Just let me know if you can hear me okay. Everything's fine? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so good morning, afternoon, evening, depending where you are. Thank you very much for this opportunity to, to be here. I'm honored and grateful for the invitation. So this was originally submitted as a contributed uh, oral paper. And I'm so glad that you uh, allowed us to have a, um, a larger uh, publicity for this project, which is, I think is a very nice project. So I'm going to talk about our work on plant pollinator interaction data within the World Fair project, which is a project I'm going to talk more later in this pre presentation. And I need to uh, acknowledge that this, that this is a team effort. So uh, we have several co-authors here who are great partners and I think some of them are in the audience in the in person. And also I know at least one of them is here at the virtual participation. And it's so great that we uh, can have this uh, participation online because I was not able to travel. So thank you so much. Uh, I need to, to say that this, um, this uh, uh, Opportunity, this project is um, um, born in the uh, IGAD uh, community of practice. So IGAD is, stands for improving a, a global agricultural data. And it's the first community of practice of uh, the RDA uh, which is the Research Data Alliance. I know many of the TEDIC uh, participants are also active at RDA, but in case you don't know it, it's a, a very important uh, global initiative on research data. So uh, th this uh, case study on plant pollination was uh, initially thought about in, within the, the IGAD community. And they got chairs in the community and uh, it gathers uh, several initiatives, especially the TEDWIC biological interaction data interest group. And also um, we have this project that's uh, a, a collaboration between uh, the UK and, and Brazil, Argentina, Chile and other countries, uh, which is the surpass to uh, the safeguarding pollination services in a changing world, and it's also a, a, a very much collaborative uh, initiative that is uh, related to the, the work I'm going to talk about today. And um, I think that the World Fair Project uh, um, 
is is very much connected with the the theme of the TEDRIC conference this year, which is uh, stronger together standards for linking biodiversity data. And uh, I'm going to talk about the importance of having cross and inter interdisciplinary approaches uh, to really uh, make make us stronger. So. I would invite you to um, go back 30 years ago and revisit the Convention on Biological Diversity and uh, the definition of biological diversity, which is the variability among living or organisms from all sources, inter alia ter terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and ecological complexes of which they are part. This includes diversity within species, between species, and of ecosystems. And also the, the convention says that it is a combination of life forms and their interactions with each other and the rest of the environment that has made Earth a uniquely habitable place for humans. And uh, if we continue at our journey through time, and uh, I will apologize for not talking about the Tedwick history right now, because it's earlier than the year 2000, but uh, I think this will be subject of another talk later today. But uh, in the year 2000, we will find this special volume of the Science Magazine, uh, explore, exploring the emergence emerging topic of biodiversity informatics and this uh, nice viewpoint from Frank Bisbee, which I believe many of you have met personally. And he's talking about this quiet revolution uh, of biodiversity informatics and the internet. He stated the fledging field of biodiversity informatics looks set to deliver major advances that could turn the internet into a giant biodiversity information system. And in the same volume of the, mag the, the science magazine, uh, we have this nice article on the interoperability of biodiversity databases, biodiversity on every desktop, presenting GBIF. And I highlighted here uh, what we can say is the core of occurrence records, uh, whether from natural collections or not. Uh, at the minimum, the scientific name and uh, uh, when and where it was collected. So GBIF has been uh, doing an amazing job on providing uh, uh, biodiversity information for everyone. I checked last, last week and found more than 2 billion occurrence records. And it seems to be growing re really fast in the, in the last uh, few years. However, when we think about biological diversity and the CDB uh, definition, we need to think about ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are part as well. So we need to go beyond the who, uh, when, and war, uh, where. For example, if we consider interactions such as this hummingbird in an heliconia plant or the diameter of uh, trees in, in an inventory. This is also um, very important uh, for biodiversity science and biodiversity data. Uh, however, uh, ecological data is heterogeneous and is still largely unavailable. Yeah, it's difficult to interpret, interpret. Uh, so, so um, although it's changing, the most researchers still rely very much on, 
on spreadsheets and this colored cells. And uh, I don't expect you to read what's in it, but just to show how messy it can be. And if we think about uh, known, uh, not born digital uh, data, there are also other uh, creation uh, challenges uh, associated with it, such as, as erasures and dif two different records in the same field. So this is a tree inventory, uh, real uh, data collection in the field in the Amazonia region. Uh, so, uh, uh, and moreover, this data can be really difficult to collect, and especially in the tropics. Uh, it's a really valuable asset. Uh, it should be preserved and shared, and we need to extract the most of it as we can. So back to the... Um, space, time, and, and um, and the uh, taxonomic scope of the, the data, biodiversity data. I show here an, an example uh, of this hetero heterogeneity. And uh, I think this is really illustrative uh, of, of how differently the, the data can be representing this during the current days. And as such, we have these uh, interoperability challenges. Um, so uh, it's very important when we talk about interoperability that we consider the syntax, the schema, and the semantics. And I would say that, that especially semantics, which where we extract the meaning, uh, um, it's it's important for understanding uh, the data to really make reasonable decisions uh, regarding interoperability and interpretation. So here we, I'm showing a, a, an example from this really nice uh, review. Uh, it's not so uh, recent, but I think it's, view, it's still very compelling on, uh, how different uh, dimensions can be uh, represented in different ways and, and how difficult it is to, to really uh, integrate this data. And if we go uh, further with uh, considering all the that, that data that we need to um, tackle the, 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 the challenges uh, that we need to, to face for, Biodiversity science, uh, if you want to understand life on Earth, we need to understand the, the different layers of uh, biological uh, organization and, and also the, the, the natural and human factors that uh, affect uh, all these scales. So with this introduction, I'm going to finally start talking about the, the World Fair Project uh, uh, shifting gears here. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's very much focused on, on interdisciplinary science. So uh, that's uh, which, which is the case I'm, I'm trying to, to make here. So I, I think that uh, by now most People uh, uh, is familiar with the FAIR principle, so I didn't put on a slide, uh, but it stands for uh, data to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and usable. It's gaining uh, importance uh, in the last few years. And I saw many um, sessions uh, this week in the TEDV conference that explored this concept. So I think most of us are familiar with that. So this project is an important partnership between CODATA and the, the Research Data Alliance. And it's funded by the European Union through the Horizon uh, program. And it started in last June and it will uh, last for two years. So just to talk a little bit more about the, the leading um, 
uh, organization CODATA. It's the committee on, uh, of the International Science Council uh, for data. And, and it's action plan on uh, 2000, for 2022 to 24. Uh, interest code data with the initiative making data work for cross domain grant challenges. Uh, so uh, I just highlighted here that um, considering the sustainable uh, development goals and the pressing global scientific and human, uh, human issues of the 21st century can only be addressed through the research that work across uh, disciplines to understand uh, complex systems and which uh, uses the inter interdisciplinary and trans transdisciplinary approaches to turn data into knowledge and then into action. So there are many components of this action plan. One of them is the current interoperability framework. May many of you may be familiar with that and also the global open science cloud initiative. So WordPair has um, uh, 11 case studies and uh, the plant pollinator uh, case study is the agricultural biodiversity case study, which is work package 10. And we also, I, I must, uh, it's worth mentioning that GBIF coordinates the biodiversity case study. So, there are common challenges uh, between our work packages. And why um, pollination and, and pollination services are important. We decided to work on, on, on plant pollinator data because it's of major importance for uh, the majority of flowering plants are animal pollinated. It's estimated uh, around 87.5% of the angiosperms. This is an estimate from Professor Jeff Ollerton, who kindly uh, shared this, this, um, this slides and, and made this uh, estimate in, in this paper at OICOS. Um, without uh, pollinators, one third of the angiosperms uh, produce zero seeds and half of, of them have 80% of more uh, reduction on, on seed production. Also plant pollinator interaction support most terrestrial uh, ecosystems and, and animal populations. So in this uh, review by Professor Jeff, uh, as many uh, as one in, in 10 described terrestrial uh, vertebrates and invertebrates may function as pollinator and also linking to agriculture, it supports uh, around 75 of most uh, productive crop plants. Uh, so it's very important also for, for plant production. Uh, in, the, in Brazil, um, we have this uh, network on, on plant planetary uh, interaction and this report also uh, had a, a similar number for the, the estimative of, of, the, of the dependence on, on, on pollination services for uh, food, food production. So the, this report is in Portuguese, uh, unfortunately, but uh, we can see here also that there was this estimative on, on um, how much it represents uh, on money uh, when we consider the, the pollination services and it was estimated for 2018 for 43 billion reals, which would be around uh, 8 billion euros today. So I think uh, uh, that's... Um,
it's quite clear that uh, biodiversity and, and uh, plant pollination interactions uh, under, underpins more, most of the, the sustainable development, uh, development goals. Uh, there is this nice note here about uh, that Professor Jeff uh, also shared because there, there are um, records of uh, seagrasses that are pollinated by some small crustaceans. So we're talking mostly about terrestrial ecosystems here, but uh, there, there are uh, other uh, marine uh, ecosystems uh, considerations that we need to be aware of. And it's it's not uh, surprising, surprise, surprising that the, the one of the first IPBIS uh, assessments were the, the pollinators, pollination and food production, because it is just uh, fundamental for human well being. So, uh, our work package in, in the um, uh, World Fair project uh, is uh, we have three tasks and we are in. in in the first one right now, which is the discovery phase, we are working on uh, mapping plant pollinating the data practices worldwide. Uh, we are uh, collecting use case and we will uh, document a work plan for pilots uh, adoption. And this will be the second phase where we will uh, 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 implement the pilots and develop the, the best practices and guidelines and recommendations. And we also are going to um, uh, estimate the, the, the costs for adoption, for, for, for a standard adoption. So uh, I put here, and I can share that slide in Slack uh, later, that in, in, earlier in this year, we promoted uh, in the RDA EGAD uh, community of practice this annual meeting, and one of the, the sessions were, was in on plant planations interaction data that was already the, the beginning of the, the discovery phase because we, we opened for, we had an open call and we already discovered some initial initiatives that we didn't we weren't aware of. So the session is available at YouTube and also uh, I didn't put here, but in June in the International Data Week, we promoted a, a very nice session on, on this topic as well. And it's also available and I can share that later. So uh, I, I must um, highlight that um, as I mentioned in the beginning, this work is very much based on the biological interaction uh, data interest group of TEDWIC. So uh, anyone interested is welcome to join. We are working uh, on the very much um, uh, connected with this uh, new data model that GBIF is proposing. One of the case studies is biotic interaction. So we have a, a, a lot of, of synergy with uh, this, this work that's being conducted between uh, Tadwick and GBIF. And I, I'm thankful to um, Jose Salim here, who is uh, one of our uh, um, members of the, the, the team members of the project. Uh, we need to, to highlight uh, this amazing source of interaction data uh, that many of you uh, may be familiar with. I'm uh, quite sure that Jorit is here in the audience and I, I'm thankful for, to him. So if in case you don't know, we have Globi, which is the Global Biotic Interactions. I hope that we did the credit right here, Jorit, because we were in doubt how to, to put it, the, the copyright. Uh, so, uh, Globi is an open infra infrastructure to share and analyze uh, species interaction data sets, and it aggregates and, and exposes the, the, the data uh, with other linked data sets in various ways. 
So it's, it's really nice. And, and Jose Salim made a, a, a pre preliminary analysis uh, of uh, plant pollinator interactions in Globe and found this uh, 20, uh, 51 data sets that had uh, either visited flowers or pollinates as the um, interaction type. So now we're going to dig it more uh, into this, this data and, and uh, understand how, how this uh, uh, pollination data is being represented. And also, uh, this is a, a, a very nice um, graph that Quentin Room uh, shared. He presented this uh, earlier in this week at, at, at the meet at the conference. So uh, this is a, a species interaction network of the organ organisms organisms recorded in, in the Mice uh, Botanic Garden, uh, which is uh, also, uh, if, in case I didn't mention before, Quentin and Martin Trekos are, are also partners in this uh, uh, project and. And they are responsible for the, the first task, the, the discovery uh, phase. And uh, so the, the, this graph uh, represents this, uh, these organisms in the, the Mice Botanic Garden in Belgium. Uh, and it demonstrates the cultivated plants and, and the, the domestic animals. So the, the green nose uh, are the, the domestic ones and how they are integrated uh, with the wild uh, organisms, which are the, the pink nodes and, and the, the size of the uh, nodes are proportional for the uh, network degree of, of the interactions. And uh, you, we see that eight uh, domestic species and also human homo sapiens uh, um, are the ones uh, labeled by, by name so the point here is that uh, there is a lack of integration of data collected about biodiversity in, in, in other disciplines such as agriculture and uh, veterinary and, and others. So this is again to, to say that we need to consider uh, all the data, uh, also the, the known natural so, uh, and co conservation uh, not natural occurrences of a species uh, if we want to, to understand um, what's going on and, and support decision make making. So uh, we, we also developed uh, in, um, in a, a, our uh, Brazilian network of the, the plant pollination interactions, this uh, vocabulary. And uh, that's, this is something that we, it's a starting point for our uh, work within the project. So we, we are going to expose it to our larger uh, community and, and improve it. And this, uh, in case you are interested, uh, was published in this year um, in this uh, Giga Science uh, paper. Again, Jose Sani is, is the first author, and, and here we, we also um, have this uh, the, the data model for, for GBIF um, also uh, uh, explored in, in the context of plant pollination interactions. So, I think this is a really important, and, and again, I'm I'm thanking for thankful for uh, Jeff Allerton because uh, in in the paper we uh, we are saying that, that, that there is these three basic uh, components of the uh, species uh, interaction, which is the co-occurrence, the encounter, and the outcome. Uh, so. Uh, the, as many as uh, one in all terrestrial animals may be pollinators, but still most uh, insect species are undescribed. Um, also plant 
uh, are better doc documented, but we still have a large uh, distribution gaps. And when we think about encounters, it, it's very uh, uh, difficult to obtain uh, the, these measurements. Uh, we need careful observation or investment in, in, in remote technology, such as camera traps. And there is also this estimative from, from Jeff Orlerton that we uh, may have only data for 10% uh, of the, the, the pollinators of flowering plants. And we, when it comes to the outcomes, uh, uh, we have perhaps less than half percent of, of, of the data for uh, uh, effectiveness of the, the flowering plants. So uh, the, our main uh, purpose here is really to, to mobilize the, the data that might still uh, be out there and and, and promote the this stand we we want to improve the the the, the standards that we have and promote adoption. So th those are a few uh, large uh, scale databases that we uh, already detected. We have this nice uh, crop bowl uh, database in, in R. We have the, the Dolby uh, database pollination. We have Globi, which I explored more earlier. So if you know, if, if you are aware of any of those that might be missing or uh, any uh, database on plant pollination interactions that are under development, please let us know. And also if you want to, to contribute, uh, we have this, uh, agricultural biodiversity plant pollination data group and everybody is most welcome to to contribute so uh, i will finish just uh, making some uh, publicization of this uh, um, this workshop that we are having next week in, in, is in the um, on tuesday uh, it's it's a uh, free of charge for, for participation and to be in person and online. So one thing that the, the World Fair project is doing to promote the, the connection between the, 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 the case studies is the, this uh, fair implementation profile, which is a, a tool for, for documenting the, what's already being done uh, with the uh, a specific uh, uh, field of knowledge or, or community. And um, it's, it's a, a way of um, uh, making more tangible the, the fair play principle. So we, we did this, the idea is to repeat this exercise in the end of the project. And we, we did the first exercise last uh, month in, in September for every uh, case study in the project we did. So we, we will present that on Tuesday, uh, what we learned. And um, it, it's uh, in case anyone in the other agency is interested on, on how uh, the, the FAIR uh, principles are being um, uh, monitored and, and, and represented in, in a, a more conceptual way. It's a nice tool. And uh, we think that, that that's a, it's a nice approach to, to make the, the different uh, domains um, uh, talk to each other, let's say. And also, uh, last but not least, we are having this uh, cross-fertilization pilot uh, workshop for uh, agricultural data at the Research Data Alliance. So uh, Research Data Alliance is, celebration, is celebrating 10 years next year, and there will be a series of, of nice um, uh, events. And, and this is a preparatory workshop, and it, it's open for anyone that can be interested in participating. And, and it's also a, a, an initiative to promote uh, um, Inter, inter, interdisciplinary uh, uh, data science. So if you are in case of interested, I'm also going to put this um, URL in, in the Slack channel. 
So I, I really would like to thank. Uh, it didn't fit here in the in the um, uh, slide, but uh, uh, the, the um, uh, we are very enthusiastic about the World Fair project, and then uh, we are also. Uh, thankful for for uh, the European Community and, and the FAPESP, which is the the São Paulo State in Brazil uh, Science Foundation for funding the Surpass project, and I would like to put the names of the team here because there are so many and, and they are so great. But uh, uh, I'm so thankful to to uh, Jose and Jeff and and Quentin Martin and Kaina and Antonio Saraiva and many others, Cindy. All the co-authors and, and all the, the, the team in, in, in the work package then. And thank you very much for listening. I'm open to any questions or, or suggestions. And then I hope this was uh, of interest for many of you. Thank you. Back to you, Jitendra. Thank you very much, Dr. Dukra, for your wonderful talk. Uh, let's have some questions. Do we have questions in the room here? Yes. And online? There's one from Joe Miller. More of a comment. Hi, Deborah. Hi. Thanks for mentioning the uh, work package nine, which is biodiversity. I thought I'd just give a little bit more context for that for the crowd. So we are, we attend similar meetings or the, 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 the meetings for the World Fair project and GBF is leading work package nine, which is on biodiversity. And that work package basically is the, the, the data model work that you're hopefully all aware of that we're leading from the secretariat that John Westjorik and, and Tim Robertson are leading, but many of you are involved in. Uh, we've actually, it's, I haven't mentioned it so far because it's, 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 it's a partial funding. It's, it's actually gonna be working that, the World Fair portion of that is going to be more the ecological data part of the model, which is more work for next year. The first uh, cabs off the rank for the data model work has been the specimens and material material samples, which we've had a couple of webinars. The next one is camera traps, which is coming up in a few weeks. And then early next year, we're going to start uh, having webinars and about the ecological data. And that's that's the stuff that will be labeled World Fair. But as Deborah mentioned, it's it's very nice that uh, I'm glad you mentioned the diversifying the data model as well because both of these work packages are are kind of synergistic as well within our community to build out the data model. So it's really be nice that we're going to have collaborations uh, between work package nine and ten for the data model. And there's also one on oceans, which involves some of our community as well. So World Fair has chemistry and social sciences, but there are three work packages that touch on our world. I just thought I'd throw that out for context. Yeah, if you allow me just to comment on Joe's comment. Thanks, uh, Joe. I, I really expect that we uh, will have the opportunity to, to connect and, and discuss together some of, of the uh, challenges of the project. So when we, 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 we really had to put it together really fast this, uh, this proposal, but I remember discussing with Quentin that uh, some of, our, of the, the outputs are, are uh, the, the deliverables are really similar. So uh, I, I really expect that we can uh, join forces on, on some of the, of the challenges that we have within the project. Time for a few more questions. Hi, Deborah. This is Debbie. How are you? Hi, I'm wondering if you can say something about any data standards um, that you've noticed already that might need work that are missing or do you have the standards you need to understand and map all that messy plant pollinator data you were showing us? Yeah, well, we did not uh, start from, from zero. Uh, so we, we basically uh, rely very much on, on this uh, standardization that we proposed on, on Joseph Salim's uh, paper. 
and, and it, it's already very much uh, congruent to, to the, the new GBIF data model. So that's the starting point. But uh, on the vocabulary, we, we do think that, uh, that probably there is much uh, still to be done. And uh, we are focusing very much on, on agriculture as well. So uh, size of fruit, quality of fruit, and things like that. Uh, 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 we believe that that's something that we will need to, to work more on. I don't know if maybe Jose has, or, or other colleagues would like to add a comment on that. Thanks, Seb. It's good to know that um, you got the people in the group that you need to work on controlled vocabularies and things. That's exciting. Thank you so much. My name is Miguel. I was wondering if you could perhaps comment on the application of what the work you're doing on the interactions that exist uh, between humans and wildlife uh, to understand better zoonotic disease emergence. Uh, Miguel, I, I don't, I'm not sure I understood the, the question, sorry. So my question is related to, to the fact that th there is a lot of um, unknowns um, for 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 the ecology of um, zoonotic diseases, the jump between wildlife, um, the transmission of disease between wildlife and humans, and I was wondering if there is any connections between the work you're doing for information on pollinators, because it's also a relationship, a very interesting relationship. I was wondering if there is any thoughts that you might have on how this could be applied to this world of zoonotic disease emergence thank you okay okay thanks well in our work package we're focusing on, on uh, plant pollinator interactions which is really i think challenging enough but uh, in, in globe you find the uh, parasites and things like that and in the world fair project one one of the the case studies is uh, health and and it's it's related to COVID-19. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but people are a little noisy. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I think that this is the, the real challenge, challenge uh, uh, that, that the, the project is trying to, to uh, tackle because it's really difficult to, to promote this connection between domains. and. Uh, I think that this fair implementation profiles is it's a nice approach. So uh, uh, we are all, uh, many of us uh, uh, are specialists in, in a domain. So my, my specialty is ecology, but uh, we need to understand and be able to interpret uh, data from health uh, and for uh, epi epidemiological uh, studies. So all, all these challenges are really uh, uh, multi and, and cross-disciplinary. So uh, this approach of, of uh, representing the, the concepts and, and, and all this, the semantic uh, tools that come with it and everything, I, I think this, uh, this is a, a, a way to go and, and I hope that will benefit uh, uh, us to, on, on being able to, to, to make these connections for, for uh, humans and, and health and, and diseases and epidemics and things like that. I hope it was uh, a satisfactory answer. Some 10, 12 years ago, I was contracted by the Food and Agricultural Organization and part of that job was to build a pollination interaction database. 
I just uh, not to build it, sorry, to to design it. Um, Food and Agricultural Organization after that got rather proprietary about it because their local database person didn't like the fact that I didn't recommend his database. So they put it behind the wall and said it couldn't be released. But I think there's a lot of valuable information in there. I'll go back through my documentation and see if I can extract parts of it. And I may go back to the FAO and see if they're now prepared to, to release that to you. Um, but it had it was quite a broad pollination interaction database. I'll let you know. Oh, thank you so much, Arthur. I, I'm so honored to see you there. So Carlos Jolie was my advisor, and uh, he always says nice things about you. And it would be great to to if we can uh, dig into this database and, and and use it. So thank you very much. So given the time, then we just have a uh, time for a quick question from online. So Prabhakar, you had raised your hand. Do you have a question for Deborah? Yeah, Deborah, very nice uh, talk. Uh, I was just uh, a follow up to the conversations that were happening just a little earlier. Um, plant pollinator interactions is one case of species interactions. The wider species interactions, zoonotic diseases, one health, interactions between humans and wildlife, things like that. I'm wondering how uh, the model or the structure that you're building for plant pollinator interactions uh, fits into the larger set of species interactions in a more general way, prey predator, parasite, like Globi has done. Uh, what is the kind of relationship? Do you see a strong connect there? Uh, do you see uh, your work as a subset of a larger uh, species interactions database? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, so I, I really uh, would uh, put emphasis uh, on our uh, biotic interactions uh, interest group at Edwick because the 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 the. Um, the concept we are we have this concept for for interaction data and the plant pollination data is a, a uh, is derived de derived uh, of the the model that we are work, working at the the at the interest group. So we are uh, right now uh, working on the on the developing developing a guide and and. We really invite more people to, to jump in and, and, and uh, help us improve it. So uh, the, the short answer is we are starting with interaction. And, and for this project, we are focusing on, on plant pollinators. So we have specific vocabulary and everything, but the, the, the basis is, uh, is being constructed to work for any interaction. Uh, I just want to kind of add up with one little mention, which is uh, human wildlife interactions, which is increasing. Prabhakar, I need to interrupt you. Sorry, Prabhakar, I have to interrupt you. We are really running over the time. I really, I'm really sorry. Okay. We can continue yeah. later. Uh, we can continue in the Slack, right? Yeah, that's true. But uh, uh, thanks, Dr. Druka, for your wonderful talk. It was very uh, pleasant having you. It's an interesting talk. Thank you. And I hope you'll be staying around to listen to the other talks as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks audience as well. So 